fellow problem solvers yet again graphs here we continue on the journey john is here so remember to share like and subscribe because this is valuable it's valuable to understand how to work with graphs so it's one thing to take a graph from its visual perspective and then understand it but it's completely a different thing to actually start with a formula and then draw a graph so that is what today's video is all about stay tuned and enjoy Good day fellow problem solvers, hope you're doing well. So yes, today we are looking at the drawing of graphs. So remember our previous lesson was on the input values versus the output values, independent versus dependent, and how to interpret graphs, to analyze them. But today we're drawing graphs. So first of all, let's just quickly remind ourselves that we have input values. Those are the ones that you choose. Those are the values that you put in, right? They are also independent. And those are the ones that you manipulate. So you choose these. Now in our example right over here, all of these, which we refer to as input values, they will be equal to the X values. Remember, these are the ones that's on the X axis. Uh, of our Cartesian plane. So these are the ones we're talking about. It's the input values. Those are the values you choose. You can see here at the table, I've indicated already for each function the input values. You can see all of the x values I've already indicated. So those are the ones that we chose. We chose these values and now we're going to look how this y value uh, which output will get remember input to output independent so the y value is dependent on our input value this is not the manipulated one this is the outcome okay this is the outcome of our calculation okay and if we look at them they are the ones that will be calculated the y values the vertical axis on our Cartesian plane. Okay, so let's take it step by step. We'll take each and every equation. Remember, an equation is a representation of a function. A graph is a visual representation of the function. So remember, it's a visual. So what we're going to draw in our Cartesian plane now will be visual to whatever equation we have. So first example, y equals x plus 1. So if x is negative 1, negative 1 plus, or uh, negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is equal to negative 1. If x is negative 1, we've got negative 1 plus 1, that becomes a 0. If x is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1. If x is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and you will see a pattern develops very quickly right over here. So now if you want to draw this, all we need to do is we need to indicate where these coordinates are. Remember, a coordinate is a set on the Cartesian plane. One x value and where it intercepts the y value. So over here, we've got x equals negative 2. So that will be on this line. And now we're asking the question, but where is y equal to negative 1? And you will notice it will be right over there x is negative 2 y is negative 1 now next one x is negative 1 and y is equal to 0 it's right over there and then x is 0 y is 1 x is 1 y is 2 and 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 and you will notice that this would be our straight line graph right there okay so this is a straight line graph it's a visual representation of our function right over there okay let's look at number two the second example y equals 2x minus 3 it's still a straight line graph but i thought i'd just spice it up, spice it up a little bit with multiplying with 2 so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Negative 1, if x, the input value is negative 1, uh, we say negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, minus 3 is negative 5. If x is 0, 
is 0 minus 3 is negative 3. I hope you see a pattern here. Right over here, whatever our value was before the x, that's the difference for consecutive numbers. You can see it's just indicated with one unit difference. Over here, there's a 2. Can you see the value increases with 2 units every time? Okay, so we've used the 1 there. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, minus 3 is 1. And 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 3 is equal to 3. You can see the difference there is equal to 2. So that's our rate of change as well. Okay, let's see. X negative 2. Y negative 7. So it's way here at the bottom right there. X negative 1. Y negative 5. Right over here. X 0, Y negative 3. Uh, X 1, Y negative 1. X 2, Y 1. And X 3, Y 3. You can see over here, it forms a nice, beautiful straight line with a nice steep gradient. You can see it increases dramatically, like double the amount than the red graph. Okay, let's go to our final graph, and this is one that's not a straight line. So how to work with functions that aren't straight lines? And you can see we'll do exactly the same. If x is negative 2, negative 2 squared is equal to 4, or positive 4. 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. Let's say x is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So let's say x is 0, then it's 0, squared is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. Let's say x is 1, then it will be a 0 once again, because 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Let's say x is 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. Let's say x is 3, then this becomes a 9. 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. So you can see this is definitely a different type of function, and we call this a, a parabola, a quadratic function. So where x is negative 2, y is equal to 3. Where x is negative 1, y is equal to 0. Where x is 0, or y, is equal to 1. Where x is 1, y is equal to 0. And where x is 2, y is equal to 3. And where x is 3, y is equal to 8. You can see here it's a way different function. And like I say, this is a quadratic function. And it looks something like this. So here we go. You've been able to plot all three of these different graphs by understanding how input values and output values correlate, and by understanding that a graph is a visual representation of the actual equation. So that's it for this section of the work. Have a lovely day.